Well, I'm back a day early from being lost in the woods yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So <clears throat> I wanted to continue on with um, some of these uh, loading steps and uh, looking at some of the details of that. And what I'm doing here today is this is a... Uh, This is one of my hunting rounds for my uh, AR-47. It's a 7.62 by 3.9. And I, uh, I'm i going over to uh, all copper bullets for hunting. Um, I don't need to consume any more lead in my life than I already have. So... Um, with uh with the copper i should be able to eat anything that isn't uh severely bloodshot without worry of uh ingesting any heavy metals so i tried to find these i tried to find these loads uh and they were commercially available at one time there was a couple couple uh specialty ammo uh, companies were producing them but um, sometimes they're discontinued or they were uh, they were out of stock they're chronically out of stock so in my frustration I finally uh, decided I would get back into uh, hand loading and uh, I had kept this this hand press from when I loaded previously. Uh, but, so the, like we talked about before, all the specs, and again, this is uh, literature that uh, Lee supplies with their, with their die sets. But all these, uh, they don't have all the dimensions here, but they have a couple of the, the important ones. We covered the trim length. That's very important. And then the maximum overall length is based usually on, and it's uh, it's listed as 2.200 inches here. And that is typically based upon the uh, the magazine of any particular firearm, uh, that in the uh, the free bore, what they call the free bore, uh, we can get into that in another video. But uh, I have my I have my magazine here. One of them is five round hunting mag, and these all fit. These all fit, and I checked them previously for function. However, they're a little long. They're a little long. It's about two, uh, two inch and uh, two hundred and thirty eight. Here's our, if you're not familiar with reading these uh, calipers, we go by this, uh, we go by this line. It's just past the two, so it's two inch, point one, two, and then the tens and ones are red on the dial. So that's where we are. And we're not quite, bring it in close here, um, Barnes manufactured these uh, bullets with this, um, this crimping groove. And we're not quite into the groove with the mouth, mouth of the, um, the brass. So we're going to 
sheet that a little deeper and get that case mouth somewhere in the in the middle of that or even towards the uh the, the front edge the edge of the groove towards the tip so that when we squeeze it in with our uh, this crimp die here that we get a nice wide front to front to back piece of this uh, neck will get pressed into that groove and give us a really uh, durable uh, loaded cartridge because this is uh, this is being fired in a uh, semi-automatic firearm and uh, we don't need especially in a hunting or uh, self-defense situation we don't need our ammo we don't need our bullet to get pushed into the case or get jammed in the rifling and when when this uh say we had to extract um to leave the bullet stuck in the in the rifling and then the case pull off and actually have the gun uh, disassemble this round so the way we prevent that is I'm going to seat that these the rest of the way. I've got some other ones I've already seated, but I'm going to seat those the, these the rest of the way. And then I'm going to uh, use the crimp die. And we'll take our measurements. So this, uh, this bullet seating die, I've already got it set. Got my shell holder in the press the shell holder here and if you look at this right now there it is see where that is right now let me put that in and now we notice compared to this one next to it here This is the one we just seated a little deeper. And this one still shows that groove. And there's the, uh, there's the last two. So now we should have our overall uh, cartridge's overall length is what we were uh, from the tip to the base. We're right at two point two, and. I previously measured the um, the free bore, and we did in the one video we went over measuring that uh, length with this using this uh, this gauge to the uh, the jump inside the rifle. And I've got this set back. It's, it's probably set back uh, 90 thousandths, which is fine. I'm, I had, um, when I was working up these loads in this, when this rifle and these, uh, this target here, I shot this back in uh, January, but, um, what I had was uh, it was all these uh, these barns, and I was starting with my. Uh, I've got two different powders here. This XD is uh, Western or, or Ramshot uh, Exterminator. Uh, works good in this uh, case, and then this other one is uh, 
Hodgkin. See if he'd be okay. And the uh, it's all with the Starline brass and these Barnes uh, copper bullets. But uh, now this represents a uh, a uh, spread of powder charges that run from. Let's see, 20, 26.5 grains all the way up to, at that day, 28.6. At 50 yards, I mean, they're all right in there. And I think there's three or four right in this hole. Maybe more, maybe five, I forget. But um, for what I use this for, this is more than acceptable accuracy. So the, the thing that I want to make sure of now is I have uh, a durable round. So now that we've uh, now that we seeded all these, and I keep a notebook, I keep a notebook of all the uh, the loads that I have and all the dimensions so that if I ever I ever use these all up I will have a, a record of uh, what went into them so this is the I don't know if we went in looked at this closely the other day this is a uh, they call it a uh, Their factory crimp die. And then there's those, you can see those four petals. You see where it's cut. I'm going to move this. You can see that where that's cut. And that is uh, this sleeve. And what happens is it, it uh, as we, as we run the ram up, the ram's holding this. It's going to push this sleeve up into there. And as it does that, those pedals are going to squeeze in. And they're going to squeeze. They're going to squeeze right. Right around this case. Right at the edge here. The case mount. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up. I'm trying to think of what I'm what I do here is I have my I have my loaded round bullet seated in the press close the ram and I'm going to run this down because the way this works is it's going to start crimping I'm going to back this nut off When this goes, when this feels like a solid right here, what's, it is a little different than the other dies. What's really happening is that bushing, it can move up farther if we push it harder, but the fingers are touching that case mouth right now. So the, any crimp I get is anything as I turn this in clockwise, and I got, this one still has a, we still have a marker mark on it for reference. So from here I can go, say I go a quarter, about a quarter turn. And you see how if you go from here, you got no gap. We go a quarter turn in, and now when it, the slack comes out of it, we got this gap here. I'm going to squeeze this. I'm going to take a look at what we got. So. You can see. Should be able to see that ring just back. Just back from the, the case mount. 
So there's this ring here. And that's the edge. That's the edge of that uh that collet inside that die. And as we screw this in a little bit more, I think they say about a half a turn full uh for the full crimp. So there's a half there's a half a turn. See how it's moved right into the one on the left is the one we just crimped. See how it's moved right into that groove. And this one, you know, if we look at the, get it to, uh, see how we're going to look at this here. The end of this has gone right in. That width. That width of that from, from here up to here. It's gone right into that groove. I can go a tiny bit less. Let's see a little bit less here. Maybe come back off of an eighth of a turn. If we measure that crimped air, so we're back on the we're back on the neck here back here we got this uh looks like it's going to be difficult isn't it no that's better uh 230 let's see 332 if we get it right where it's crimped. Is that right where it's crimped? It's about 10 thou smaller diameter, give or take. And then it goes down to the bullet diameter. There's a bullet diameter. It's 310. So this... If you look at it, that's uh, I don't know if that's too bright. Or that helps. Lighting's not great today. And I can try this. <sighs> I could try this in my, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open up this AR so that my, uh, my hammer is not in play. And I should see if I can. Fits. Or just as you can see, it's fully forward. And it ejects. So, I'm going to call that I'm going to call that a result. That's what we want. I got 20, I think 27 more of them to do here. So, I'm going to go ahead and run through those. And, uh, 
Let's see, tighten down this. I want to get pressure on the on the ram. Tighten down this. thing about this uh, factory crimp die is it uh, it squeezes in it doesn't put it doesn't put any force down that way any uh, in that direction in case mount so it's not going to collapse the shoulder the way it works is it just squeezes it squeezes in from the sides Not all these rounds, uh, you know, not all the rounds you fire from a rifle need a heavy crib. You know, if you had a, uh, so a single shot, uh, the uh, single shot rifles are not as uh, hard on your ammo as our... Uh, Uh, magazine rifles because uh, you got say you got all these uh, especially with really heavy recoiling rifle you got you got all these in the magazine like this and every time the gun fires they go there uh, the gun moves to the rear and slams into the tips and so it deforms those tips and not only that it starts trying to push them into the case or loosen them up and over time, as you load them in the gun and you shoot and you got, um, you got some of your ammo doesn't get uh, fired that, say, that season. But it was altered by the gun and use. Um, I had one time I had a bullet pull out on me. And it took, it took my rifle out of action for, uh, for a while. I didn't have compressed air and I had to... Uh, I was, it was a camping hunting trip and it helped to having to um, just pour water down the barrel and into the action because all the uh, the powder that came out of the casing when the bullet pulled bound it up. Might as well had uh, fine gravel in there. It was, uh, it was a mess. So I'm really careful with how my... Uh, How durable my hunting ammo is. Let me grab it. Let me see. Grab another one. These seem to vary a little bit uh, where that groove, where that uh, groove in the bullet is. But here's one. So here's the first one we did here on the right. And then there's this one. 
but they both show. They both show a decent, they both show a decent crimp. This brass could have been a hair longer. You're talking about that, you know, that groove was, uh, it was just about a half a millimeter wide, the crimping groove in the bullet. So that's, that's 20 thousandths. You get a uh, difference in case length of uh, five, sh five thousandths show up just with the naked eye looking at that. So that's what we're after. This uh, this pushed right in. You can see we really see on this one, and you can see you can see these little marks where the gap is, where the gap was between the uh, different petals. Not sure how well that's showing up there. There's one there. I'm gonna rotate this. Here's the next one. A little gap, there's one. So then that's it. These should all be, uh, should all be good to go. I originally developed this load. I had, uh, I had this bullet seated uh, 50 thousandths back from the, uh, where the bullet would engage the rifling jump 50 thousandths and it went about uh <clears throat> i think i went just about another millimeter another 40 that's like 90 um my accuracy suffer a little bit yeah it's possible it's, it doesn't cause any other problem but the one thing that might cause a problem when you have these seated out too far as far as pressure goes and there's no there's no jump once you fire this bullet has to it's already jammed into the rifling and it also might have a crimp so it's got all those forces keeping it in place before it starts to move and that's where your pressure spikes but uh in this instance we know that the jump to the rifling is a is a good amount which is fine which is um, the military tends to do in their chambers is they have a long free bore. So there's a long, there's a long distance between the, where the full diameter of their, their bu typical bullet ends and where the rifling begins is pretty long. And that allows them to run a hotter load, a higher velocity. It might not, might not necessarily be as accurate as far as, <clears throat> 